this thing could actually potentially run in American rallies. That, oh my god, and it's got the intake just popped out of the hood, just cut open. Did I mention that this thing has a sequential gearbox? Enzo Ferrari is 100% rolling in his grave right now, which by the way, if you'd like to know the automotive news for the week, here is that in like 10 seconds. Number one, Ford recalled 1 million cars over brake hose issues. The guy that was stoked on going to Rivian and said there was the best thing ever that left McLaren is now back at McLaren. EVs aren't doing so hot because people are starting to realize that money doesn't just grow on trees and it's not free anymore. Mazda promoted Masahiro Moro to CEO of Mazda. There's, there's some good news in there, a slight glimmer of hope and an otherwise dull week of depressing news. And as I was doing my due diligence, as I was going out there to learn more about what's happening in the world, I came across something that just made me happy and I want you to experience it with me too. There's a guy, I out there by the name of Sam Albert. He's got a 2004 Subaru WRX STI. No, we're not talking about Dona Media. We're talking about the fact that he did take out the stock block of that car and he replaced it with something absolutely legendary. This man put an F136 IB motor from a Ferrari California into a 2004 Subaru STI. What makes Sam's build so iconic about this is not just the fact that it's a Ferrari and a Subaru. It's not just the fact that it can play into all sorts of jokes about reliability. It has to do with the fact that it is right now in the course of being legal for the American Rally Association. This thing could actually potentially run in American Rally. That is insane to me. Now, this was sponsored by Dirtfish as well. I think he just put up a video. I want to watch it with you as like him testing it out and how it all feels but he's been working on this thing for what seems to be just about two years and just a couple days ago he did his first full like soft run out there at dirtfish now the crazy thing about this too is not only is it legal for the american rally association it's also legal for street use the car has street plates on it i want to show you this video hold on hold on, hold on. you got you get you have to watch the video otherwise it's it just doesn't make any sense Listen to that noise. That, oh my God. And it's got the intake just popped out of the hood, just cut open. This scratches a part of my brain I didn't know I needed scratched. And rally people, they just do it different. They just do it different. Listen to that! What's so cool is so like Road and Track literally just did an article on this build. The, 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 the f it we ball energy when it comes to people that do seem to have some form of Ferrari piece, but not a whole Ferrari car, or they have a Ferrari that's like the, the redheaded stepchild. The f it we ball energy is at an all time high. And Sam has high energy in that regard. This thing looks insane. Apparently he says the inspiration is that idle hands are the devil's playground. And he just wanted to do it because it would be fun. Plus if it passes the open in four-wheel drive class, he will actually run it in like competitive racing. He'll actually run it on the street too, but that's not really that big of a deal. At least up here in Wisconsin, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, but Albert was a special forces officer and he developed the concept for this build when he was on deployment overseas in 2019. A restricted turbocharged EJ series engine makes a lump of torque, but kind of loses itself on the top end, which is definitely true. A great way to fix that a lot of times is sometimes you can go and you can rebuild an EJ. You can go and maybe add, you know, Know, different sorts of forces, uh, force induction. Um, other people, they just swap it out with a Ferrari California engine. 
Um, depends on where you're at in your experience of modification. Some are a little bit more difficult than others, um, but it is possible. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to say it with a straight face. The, the, the Ferrari California engine was picked purposely because it's a more affordable option to what he originally wanted to do, which was to put a 458 engine in it. But going back to the fuck we ball energy, the I guess what Albert said is that he pretty much just decided he wanted to do it, checked out a friend that had a Maserati that had a very similar platform, took a look at the engine, the size, things like that, did a little bit of measuring and said, yep, I'll buy it. Went out, bought a crate, you know, engine probably used and started it in December of 2021. So we are only two years and three months into this and this man has swapped an engine from a Ferrari California into a Subaru STI and custom fabricated parts to make the engine work with the drivetrain that was in the actual car. Cause the EJ, when they ripped that out, they wanted to make sure that they could at least keep some of the stuff that they had going on with the car still there. The thing that really blows my mind is the fact that the custom parts were designed to make Ferrari with Subaru. Does this mean that he'll get sued? Only God knows because technically, Ferrari's litigation stance is that if it's anything that has to do with like altering, uh, demoralizing, diminishing the namesake of Ferrari, that's when they get in trouble. Like the reason the Ferrari got in trouble was because of that. But just swapping out an engine, not so much. But I don't think he has anything to really worry about if a Ferrari dealership were to maybe tell him no. Did I mention that this thing has a sequential gearbox that was supposed to be mated to an EJ255 and then was like, no, let's go to a Ferrari. This stuff makes me so happy for so many different reasons. Anytime I can talk about rally, I want to because it is the most exciting, energetic, and, and super crazy energy out there that nobody seems to give a whole lot of attention to. It's, it's there, people do it all the time. It's exciting, it's wild, it's cool. There's courses, there's training places, there's things that you can do with your stock car. You can do so much cool shit in the rallycross world that that a lot of people don't seem to ever pay attention to like at all and to see somebody do this and and almost openly say you know I, I have experience obviously working on cars but this is a little bit more just like let's give it a shot and just kind of see how it goes that is such a cool energy to have especially in the automotive scene now somebody did call, talk a little bit of shit on January 15th when he ran it for the first time he said she kind of runs and then somebody goes you should probably turn it off it sounds like a tractor let me be clear all, they all do a lot of them do all the time Literally every time I start up the 430, it sounds like a tractor. I'm convinced the engine actually is from a tractor and they just spray painted the top of it red and the bottom of it silver and they're like, close enough for me. This is a super cool build. I would highly recommend checking this thing out because the amount of like work he had to do to figure this whole thing out, talking about wiring, talking about cooling, talking about harnesses, trying to mate everything together, trying to get Subaru to talk to Ferrari. That's, those are two different, those are two different countries trying to talk to each other and they don't like each other. I can't imagine a Ferrari and a Subaru sitting in the same living room having a decent conversation about literally anything. And somehow this guy is making it happen and it is nuts. So I'll let you guys be the judge of it. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. We're still in March Martini Madness where we've been posting every day, Monday through Friday. So if you haven't had a chance yet, please be sure to subscribe. I'm Alex, Alex Art Martini with two underscores on Instagram and we will see you later. Adios.